this short video, I'd like to provide some clarity on the facts surrounding asylum seekers and refugees in Australia, as I believe that the distorted lies by our government and misrepresentation by some media outlets is creating harmful information to be spread to Australia's citizens. I would like to first tackle Australia's flawed current policies and false information being spread, then talk about boat arrivals and the appalling treatment of adults and children in detention. Finally, I'd like to discuss the reasons why people leave their mother country, travel in perilous ways to get here, and why it is so important for us to welcome these strangers to our shores with compassion and open arms. Now, I'm not an expert on refugees. I'm just a concerned individual, and originally an immigrant from Canada as well, who is getting increasingly frustrated at how the morals of some of our country's citizens and the government are currently in a free fall. I'm frustrated by misinformation being broadcasted, and I'm angry and dismayed at the lack of compassion and the fear-mongering that is being perpetrated. I share this concern along with a large growing number of voices of dissent and outrage in the community that our country is unwell. Our Australia is being poisoned by forces that are trying to convince us to be an unwelcoming, selfish and cruel society when it comes to refugees and asylum seekers. The following facts are all publicly available and easily acquired but are often being distorted or, in a surprising number of cases, outright lied about by my mainstream media and the government. One of the broadest lies is that seeking asylum is somehow illegal. When Australia signed up as a signatory of the Refugee Convention back in 1951, it was to be part of a collection of 145 countries that promised to do everything in their power to protect people fleeing tyrannical regimes. In fact, by definition, Asylum seekers are judged to be genuine refugees if they have a well-founded fear of persecution from their home country. Australia has not officially changed its policy, and as such, it is incorrect to call boat people illegal. Now let's address the immigration panic that seems to grip some Australians, and look at how many people are actually coming here. As it turns out, the panic is completely unfounded. Total immigrant intake is 185,000 people, while asylum seeker applications represent only 8% of that. The actual number granted asylum is only 2.7%, or about 5,000 people a year. So, Australia currently ranks 52nd in the world relative to GDP for accepting asylum seekers. To put this in perspective, the World Bank and IMF rank Australia as fifth wealthiest in the world as ranked by GDP per capita. We are not pulling our weight, and we are coming across as greedy, selfish whingers lacking in compassion for those in need while readily being able to provide for potentially thousands of more refugees than we already take. There seems to be a lot of people concerned about the manner in which asylum seekers arrive in Australia. For starters, only 42% of asylum seekers arrive by boat. Our government wants to demonize these people who have made the very difficult choice to risk their lives to travel in this manner by calling them queue jumpers. There is no queue. When you are attempting to avoid death or incarceration in your country of origin, this misleading label is nonsensical and suggests that there is some very orderly bunch of people taking a number and sitting at a counter for their name to be called. Instead, in the real world, Due to a lack of options and fear for their lives, these folks of all ages and backgrounds, students, mature adults, professionals leaving successful businesses and jobs behind, families and established members of their society who wouldn't have chose to leave if they could, are making the hard call to turn their lives upside down to survive. Interestingly, those arriving by plane are not detained. Because Australia bequeathed them with the golden visa while in the country they departed from, they arrive in our land, so-called legally, and then apply for asylum. Once boat people arrive, they are treated like criminals, despite the fact that ultimately 90% of these arrivals are found to be genuine in their reasons for seeking asylum, which again, interestingly, is a higher percentage than those arriving by plane. This makes me so angry because the government makes things so complicated and lacking in compassion for people who can't afford to fly or are unable to obtain a visa due to Australia's lack of representation in certain regions around the world, or their stringent policies for giving out visas. Ironically, what our government is actually doing is encouraging people to get in boats, since we are severely limiting their options. 
If Australia simply put formal processing centres in Southeast Asia, people's claims could be assessed in advance. As it stands, they have no option but to make the perilous journey. We could have a very civilised intake where refugees were assessed quickly and incorporated into communities, given language education and encouraged to work immediately, thus contributing to the economy, vastly reducing immense detention and border protection costs and creating a more compassionate environment where new arrivals are welcomed because they haven't come out of a negatively charged atmosphere. Speaking of costs, did you know that it costs $225,000 to $450,000 per person to detain an asylum seeker on Nauru or Manus Island? If they were allowed to live in the general community and work, that figure would be $35,000 and they would be giving back to the economy much more quickly. The fact that national security is now tied together with those seeking asylum has simultaneously heightened anxiety about possible terrorism while appearing to be taking care of matters with the government's Operation Sovereign Borders, a classic political trick of creating a problem and then providing the solution in order to look like a hero. If you care to look, it's easy to see through this smokescreen, which further reveals the true mess of how Australian government and military have dealt with the asylum seeker issue. By misleading the public, manipulating and exaggerating the threat of terrorism, shutting out journalists from reporting on border protection and detention centers, threatening anyone who talks about it with a two-year jail sentence, spying on other government officials, overstepping its boundaries when sending boats away, unethically sending asylum seekers onto poor and corrupt regimes who are less equipped to deal with refugees but still end up taking them in, all the while breaching 11 international laws to do with refugee treatment and maritime law activity by allegedly paying people smugglers to ship people back to Indonesia, strip searching peaceful protesters upset about children in detention, posting advertising in war-torn countries warning people not to come, and being complicit in the torture and abuse of people they have detained. Phew, that's a lot of lying, bullying and cruelty. Whether or not we can control the decision that asylum seekers make to jump on a boat is irrelevant. It's the fact that we choose to lock them up and terribly mistreat them which is something that we have full and conscious control over and is utterly reprehensible. The treatment of boat people in detention is horrific. We've recently heard how women are raped and guards pay for sexual favors and then videotape them. We know of hunger strikes and people sewing their mouths up. We hear about people dying due to inadequate medical care. We know that innocent children make up a large contingent of the imprisoned. And then there is the so much we don't hear about because the government has sanctioned the suppression of media access to these areas. The realities that we don't know about might be much worse. Is this the type of government we want representing our country? And do we as Australians want to go further down this embarrassing road in history as the most heartless and selfish citizens, lacking in compassion and condoning abuse and torture of vulnerable people through our inaction? Despite the false rhetoric that these people might be dangerous or maybe freeloaders looking for an easy life in Australia, people keep coming. To me, this shows an immense amount of courage and determination to survive. Aren't these the type of people we want in our country? When a person lives under a regime, who inhumanely strips away all of their rights, forces them to live under a shadow of daily fear, threatens them with death and makes life for them and their family a living nightmare, who of us that value life and freedom would not consider doing anything in their power to change that situation? Refugees aren't beggars. They are often professionals, students, or people with a lot of life experience, mature parents, and so on. When they arrive here, many express a substantial desire to not want to leave their home country. They have spent decades developing their life and, and where our other family, friends, cultural identity, language and history all are. Knowing that you are heading somewhere where you have to start from scratch in strange surroundings with little support must be one of the most difficult decisions for a person. Australia might be a better option than their current living situation provides. But that doesn't mean that they wouldn't rather stay in their own home if they could. 
Australians sometimes get a swelled head thinking that our country is so awesome and that's why everyone's trying to get here. We must be reminded that we are indeed a lucky country. Not only do we represent a very small percentage of the world population who live at the standards of wealth and opportunity like we do, we have a capability to be one of the most generous countries. With privilege comes a moral and ethical responsibility to help those with less, which will, in turn, further enrich our lives and community if we choose to be generous. The vexing and mystifying thing about how some Australians view immigrants is that they are quite happy accepting the current day-to-day -day aspects of life, like ethnic food, clothing, furnishings, sport, music, art, and culture, that we have as a direct result of immigrant influx over the last 50 years. But when we hear from these people, they go on about taking away jobs, potential risks in their communities, not speaking English, their religion taking over, and so on, even though historically there's no reason to think that this will happen in Australia. If we embrace the stranger to our land, we will find ourselves a happier, more constructive, and compassionate nation, not the opposite. The purpose of this video series is to educate anyone who is misinformed about the situation and hopefully inspire and encourage more people to voice their anger about government policies, morals, and actions. I believe that we are reaching a critical mass of people who simply want to live in a just and welcoming nation and that the idea of people being tortured by our own elected democratic government is wrong and needs to be changed. Please participate by showing your support to groups like Welcome to Australia, Amnesty International, Get Up, or put up one of Peter Drew's Real Australians Say Welcome posters, or make a video, write a letter, talk to your friends, or anything else that raises awareness about this issue. And thanks for watching.